Hey guys, thanks for coming to my channel. This is Jerry from Philippines and Beyond. Now today's uh, topic is going to be on international travel for beginners. So I just want to give you guys some tips on the, just some travel tips on traveling to the you know to the Philippines or traveling to Asia or traveling to Europe. Uh, just some basic travel tips. Uh, and again, this is for post-COVID <laughs> type of tips. Uh, the COVID-19 has really put a lot of damper on traveling and things have kind of changed. But once all this COVID-19 stuff is over with, I think uh, international travel will somewhat go back to some type of normality. And I just want to give you guys some tips. Uh, I know, you know, I just recently met somebody that just having a lot of issues. Uh, I mean, they got stuck here for COVID. Uh, they're having a hard time getting access to their uh, bank accounts. They're trying to set up other accounts to transfer money, this and that, while they're in the Philippines. Uh, and it's a little tougher. So uh, some of the tips I'm going to talk about, uh, you need to set up in your home country before you even get to wherever your destination is, whether it's Asia, Europe, uh, you know, Middle East, or wherever you go. All right? So let's go ahead and let's get started. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, we're going to use the Philippines uh, for the purpose of this video. Uh, if we have to use any kind of examples or anything. But so the first thing you want to do is, before you even think about buying a plane ticket, is you want to get a passport. Now, some of you guys may already have a passport, and, and some of you guys may not. So the first thing you want to do is get a passport, a valid passport. Uh, and it's probably going to cost you, depending uh, how fast you need the passport, it can cost you anywhere from about 80 bucks to about $200, $200 depending how fast you want to get your passport. And nowadays what they do is they give 10-year passports, okay? Uh, and you want to get the book. Uh, there's two different kinds. There's, there's a passport that's a book where, you know, you, uh, the uh, immigration of whatever country you want to put stamps in it. And then there's another type of passport, I think it's just like a card, it looks like a driver's license, I don't have one. <clears throat> That's if you're just going to Canada and Mexico, you can use the uh, license type of passport. But if you're going to uh, uh, another country outside of Canada and Mexico, you got to use the book passport. Now you can get a thicker book with a lot of pages, or you can get a thinner book that has less pages, it's up to you, depending how, how often you think you got to travel. Uh, but again, the, your passport will be good for 10 years, all right? For those of you guys that already have a passport, make sure that uh, your passport has, a, has more than six months to expiration. Because on one of my trips, I remember I had around, I think I was just under six months and it was going to expire. I figured I was fine because I was only going to the Philippines for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, whatever it was. And when I got to, uh, the, uh, to check in at my airlines, they go, hey, you know, your passport is less than six months. But they gave me a waiver. Uh, being that it was so close to six months and they knew I had a return ticket and everything, they gave me a waiver, waiver they overrode uh, the rule and I was able to get on board, I got very lucky. So again, for those of you guys that already have a passport, make sure that the expiration is uh, greater than six months. Alright, so once you get your passport, and <clears throat> usually that will take uh, I don't know, anywhere from um, 10 to 14 days, you should get your passport. In the old days, uh, when you get your passport, you can just walk into a, uh, uh, a post office and uh, I think they used, to, they used to do it on Saturdays and just go apply for a passport. Nowadays, you actually have to make an appointment online. You can go to your uh, local mayor's office. They have a division there where you can get a passport. Uh, or you can go to the post office, but you've got to make a, an appointment online. At least in Illinois, that's how it is. So if you have to make an appointment online, make sure you do so. Uh, and then it's fairly quick, uh, fairly easy. I'm not going to go into all the uh, everything that you need to make a passport, but again, uh, on the website when you make an appointment uh, to get a passport, they'll tell you exactly everything you need to do. All right, so once you get your passport, then you're able to buy your airline ticket. Now, uh, buying an airline ticket, you always want to buy it well in advance because uh, you get a better price. Uh, but nowadays, you know, with this COVID thing and uh, even when this uh, COVID-19 uh, virus situation is over with, 
and hair lines are somewhat going back to, uh, say, to normality. <laughs> Uh, I think if you buy a, your airplane ticket two to three months in advance, I think you'll still be fine and you'll be able to get a good price on the ticket. Generally, I like to buy my tickets nine months, nine, nine, at least nine or ten months, nine to twelve months in advance. But buying a ticket two to three months in advance, uh, you'll be fine. Now, if you're going to Southeast Asia or whatever country that you're traveling to, uh, and for the purpose you know, of this video, we talk about the Philippines. If you come into the Philippines, guys, you're going to need an onward ticket if you're going to be in the country for more than 30 days, or more than 29 days, I should say. If you've got a round trip ticket that's less than 30 days, that's 29 days or less, you don't need an onward ticket, okay? Because they know you're going to leave the Philippines within that first 30 days. But if you're staying longer than 30 days, <coughs> then what you got to do is, uh, even though you have a round trip ticket, say two months down the road to come back from the Philippines, you still need an onward ticket uh, that's before that 29 day expiration date, or 30 days, I would say 29 days. So what you do is you buy an additional one way ticket and it get the cheapest one you can, you can that will leave the Philippines uh, within the first 29 days. You're never gonna use it, okay? It's a, called an onward ticket. So get the cheapest one possible, you're never gonna use it. Uh, and then what you do is uh, once, because the airlines are gonna ask you for this onward ticket. Okay, uh, and if you don't have it, they won't let you on. So you'll you'll be at the airport, having to get online to buy one. And if you have to buy an onward ticket at the last minute, it's going to cost you hundreds of dollars. Where if you get this onward ticket ahead of time, it could be anywhere from thirty to fifty dollars. Right? And again, you're never going to use it, but you got you need the ticket to get on to work. Uh, now, for some of you guys, I know uh, have messaged me in the past and asked me, you know. When's the best time to come into the Philippines? Majority of the flights that you're gonna see usually get into the Philippines uh, right around 10, 10 or 11 o'clock at night. <coughs> at least that's where, when I first come into the Philippines uh, in 2014, that's the kind of flights I was getting. I'd get in late night, you know? And, you know, again, if you're coming in late night, it could be kind of a hassle, especially for those of you guys that don't know where you're going and stuff. I mean, you know, you probably got a, a hotel reservation, which is cool, but you're coming in late at night, you, you know, you could kind of, I don't know, you can get scammed, maybe the taxi driver might charge you a little bit more or stuff like that. So again, coming in at night, uh, it's easier to get kind of scammed because they, you know, the locals know that you're in at night, you may not know where you're going. If they know that you're a newbie, you're a first timer and you're very green, they're going to try to extract a little extra money out of you and they might charge you a little bit uh, more expensive taxi fare or whatever. So what you want to do is what I would recommend is you take a red-eye flight. Uh, once I noticed that there were red-eye flights going to the Philippines, I just I only take red-eye flights, say coming from the States to the Philippines. And a red-eye flight is basically a, uh, it's a midnight flight from your home country. Uh, and again, if you're in the U.S., if you take a midnight flight in the U.S., you will arrive in the Philippines in the morning. It could be anywhere from like 10 in the morning to maybe 12 o'clock uh, afternoon. So it's always better to come in uh, in the morning, I think, on any country, especially uh, if you're not accustomed to traveling and stuff. So again, I highly recommend that you take a red-eye flight because you will get to the Philippines in the morning where there's you know more security around and stuff like that. So it'll be easier for you to navigate uh, and do what you got to do uh, to get to your hotel once you get to the Philippines. Now, so right now, you, you so far you've got your passport, you bought your ticket so you know when you're going. Uh, and I, like I said earlier, guys, uh, this video is geared more towards the uh, tourist, okay? It's going to be in the Philippines for up to around a month, three weeks to a month. So the next thing you want to do is you want to set up your tenure in, in advance and here's the reason why. Uh, if you're only on a limited amount of time that you're going to be in the Philippines, uh, you really want to set your hotels, you know, you want to get your hotels ahead of time. Uh, you want to you know, basically set up your flights ahead of time so that when you get to the Philippines, you know, you're not trying to, uh, you know, buy a ticket or go look around uh, to get the best deal uh, on a hotel and stuff like that. So you're going to be wasting a lot of time trying to find the basic amenities that you need when you get there, where you can do everything online. 
I mean, in the old days when I used to travel, I used to backpack a lot after college. Yeah, there were no, there were no internets. You know, we had the Let's Go Europe book or Let's Go Wherever book. You know, we had a book, basically give you all the hotel numbers and tell, uh, hotel phone numbers and addresses and stuff. And we'd come in town. We'd get a first thing we do is get a map of the of the town. You can buy you know, a, a map for a couple of bucks of your local area, and then we go look for a hotel. And that took up a lot of time. But back then, I used to travel three, four months at a time. And here, you know, you may not have that kind of time. You might only have three weeks, and you might want to see you know four, you know, two or three islands in that span of three weeks. So. You don't have that kind of time to be looking around for accommodations or buying, trying to buy some flights to go to another island where you can just do all this ahead of time. So again, set up your whole trip itinerary ahead of time. That's what I would recommend. And you can make a little flow chart, you know, on paper, you know, start out in Manila, you know, go to Makati, you know, get a hotel there for two days or three days, and then, you know, maybe draw an arrow down saying, uh, now you want to go to you, know, you might want to go to this town or that town in a few days there. So that's what I always do. And then every time I'm at a certain, when I come to a certain town and I fulfill that itinerary, I just cross it off. So then I know next where I'm going to and what hotel and everything. So setting up your itinerary in advance is well uh, recommended, highly recommended. Now, the, after you set up your itinerary on a flow, on a, on a flow sheet, you know, uh, then what you want to do is you want to start uh, reserving hotel accommodations in advance. And that's what's so great about the internet. You can go online, there are third party type of uh, websites that will enable you to uh, uh, just see the hotel rates uh, uh, in advance and just set up your hotel uh, accommodations in advance. Uh, there's also reviews on the hotels. So if you're looking for hotels, don't just look at the price. Uh, look at the reviews. A lot of times, uh, even though the price might be great on a hotel, the reviews might tell you otherwise. <laughs> so, uh, and when you hope, when you when you're reserving a hotel, guys, I always like to uh, get a hotel that's got a safe. Now, some of these hotels will have a safe large enough to put in your electronics and your cameras and all that. In others, will have smaller safes that at least you can put in your money and your credit cards and passports and stuff like that. In you know, you lock it up in your hotel and you punch in your own PIN number. Uh, for the safe, so and you know nobody really comes in and messes with your stuff. So again, highly recommend if you can get a hotel with a safe. One of the things you're going to see when you're uh, trying to uh, w when you're online uh, looking at the different accommodations that that hotel offers, sometimes it'll say it comes with a safe and it doesn't. So just be aware of that. Uh, there are also Airbnbs that you can rent <coughs> if you want to go uh, a little bit less expensive than hotels. <coughs> but uh, I would say sometimes the hotels are less expensive than the Airbnbs. So reserve your you know hotel accommodations to you know pretty much all the your whole throughout your whole itinerary. So now you got your flights, you got your hotels reserved, and that's that's a good start. Next thing you want to do, guys, is you got to make sure when you're on vacation you have access to money. Now you're gonna. You're gonna, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring money with you, but I don't know, you know, sometimes you, you may underestimate how much money you're gonna spend when you're on your trip. You might spend a little bit more and you might spend a little less, I don't know. You might meet some cool people, you might start partying uh, and start going through money. Anything could happen, so you may uh, go above the budget that you brought with you, and so you wanna make sure that you have access to money so that you are able to finish your trip and also be able to get out of the country because there's going to be there may be some airport fees that you have to pay like a exit tax and stuff like that in certain countries so you want to make sure you got money on you when you go to the airport <coughs> to be able to uh, pay your exit tax and get out of the country so what you want to do is uh, there's some there's one good way to set up a, uh, some online uh, websites that you can set up uh, that will give you access to money uh, one will be uh, Remitly, these are money transfer companies, there's Remitly, there's World Remit, TransferWise, Zoom, there's a whole bunch of them. I like using Remitly, I've had no issues, and I would strongly suggest Remitly or World Remit, that's two good ones that I have. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to set these accounts up on, uh, online, set up an account online, and uh, link it to one of your savings account or checking accounts. 
but do it all, do it while you're in the United States or in your home country, okay? Set everything up there, and then you're good to go. And what you can do is like, if you run out of money, you can send yourself some money, and it'll give you, uh, it'll give you options of where to pick up the money. It could be at a local bank here in the Philippines, it could be at a pawn shop, you know, New Year, or whatever. So you give yourself a choice of where to pick up your funds. Uh, one thing you want to make sure though, depending on where your fund pickup is going to be, sometimes you, it limits you as how much money you can pick up from that entity. So for example, if you send yourself uh, some money to BDO for you to pick up, and basically what you do is, the money might take three to five days for it to get there, or you just walk in with like a, uh, like a number, like a transaction number in your ID, and the BDO will give you the money. Uh, they're not going to charge you an extra transaction. You'll be charged transaction one time through the either Remitly or you know, World Remit or whoever you use. And then when you go pick up the money, but BDO might only let you pick up up to three hundred dollars. Where New Year might only let you pick up up to two hundred dollars, and that's you're gonna have to play around with that and uh, and see uh, how much you can pick up at these different locations, right? You'll have to figure out, or you can always ask uh, these pick up locations, what's the maximum I can send myself to pick up from your location? <coughs> so, now that you've set up uh, money transfer companies, the next thing you want to do is, uh, you want to buy a money belt. Uh, and I would highly recommend that you have a money belt with you. Uh, in your money belt, you're going to be carrying your valuables. Uh, being Your valuables is going to be your cash. Uh, your driver's license or international license, uh, if you're coming to the Philippines, guys, if you're coming from the U.S., your driver's license is good for up to 90 days here. Uh, you can drive on an American license for up to 90 days, just so you know. I mean, I've known guys that are still driving on their driver's license. They've been here for one or two years, and you're still driving on their U.S. license. Uh, I would suggest that you bring a couple of credit cards. Uh, make sure you know your ATM PIN number. Bring it with you. Uh, in case for emergencies, I, I hate using credit cards here. <coughs> I, I mean, I do occasionally, just to keep the card active. But you may be in a situation where you can't send yourself money, but you can go to an ATM and get some money out. So you bring a couple of credit cards, or you can walk into a, a mall or somewhere where they take credit cards, and you can use it. So uh, don't use debit cards here, guys. Use credit cards, because if the card gets hacked, if the credit card gets hacked, you get your money back, but if the debit card gets hacked, you can lose money. Sometimes up to five hundred dollars. Uh, so you might want to keep that in mind. So again, bring a couple of credit cards, and before you leave, uh, a couple of days before you leave, you contact your credit card companies and you give them a travel alert, or you can go online and put in your travel alert and let them know that you're going to be in the Philippines or whatever country that you're going to be in for X amount of time, so that they don't block your card when you try to use it. Okay, so again, uh, buying a money belt is important. In the money belt, you can carry all your valuables, you can, you can carry your cash, your driver's license, uh, your credit cards, and also you can put your passport in there as well if you want. So, highly recommend it. In the money belt, you can pretty much buy anywhere. You can go to, you can go to Walmart, you can go any kind of store in the U.S. Uh, to, to buy a money belt. Secondhand stores sometimes will have money belts. You can buy it online. Uh, just It's pretty easy to get a money belt. It might cost you about 10 bucks. Next thing you want to bring with you or you want to have is uh, definitely bring your smartphone. Uh, and I know T-Mobile uh, will work in the Philippines. I'm not sure if any other uh, companies nowadays will work in the Philippines, but you want to bring a smartphone, and even if your phone doesn't work in the Philippines, uh, then what you want to do is you want to make sure that your smartphone is unlocked. You want to unlock it in the U.S. before you get here and make sure it's unlocked. And then once it's unlocked, if you come here and, and you can just buy a, a, a SIM card, it'll get you a phone number as well, and you can put loads on it. And just use it like a local phone here in the Philippines. It's highly, highly recommended. <coughs> you also want to... Uh, possibly bring a laptop with you or, or an iPad. Uh, if you bring a laptop, uh, make sure you get a 14 inch laptop. Because you may have to go online to maybe book a flight or do something online. Good to have a laptop with you. Uh, but again, a smartphone can do a lot of things a laptop does as well as an iPad. Uh, if you, you know, 
on your smartphone, one thing I'll do when I mention is download the Grab app. Because uh, Grab is a good, uh, is a good taxi company type uh, to use here in the Philippines. Uh, a lot of the taxis here, that especially the white taxis, are, they try to kind of scam people. And, you know, they'll tell you that your the meter's not working. And they'll try to, uh, you know, get some extra money from you. So you don't want to, if you don't want to hassle with these taxi guys, and I have. Uh, and I've seen every kind of scam. I even, uh, I even videoed a guy that was trying to scam me on, on one of my trips. It was really funny. I've got a video on it. You guys can look it up. Uh, so if you want to, don't want to deal with that, then uh, just get Grab. The Grab taxis are, and they're not even really considered taxis. These are personal drivers. Uh, they're really cool. People are really nice. Uh, they'll pick you up. It's a little bit more expensive than the white taxi, but well worth it. Well worth it and no hassles. So make sure you download the Grab app. I would also, uh, if you bring in a laptop or a smartphone, download Skype. Uh, what's nice about Skype is if you need to call your bank, uh, because maybe they blocked you or whatever, uh, Skype, on Skype, you can call them. Uh, all 800 numbers are for free on Skype. So if, you have, if you're calling an 800 number, it's free. There's no cost. All right? So that, highly recommend. These are the electronics that I would consider or I would recommend that you guys bring with you. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is uh, you want to familiarize yourself before you come out with the airport of arrival. Uh, and for, especially for those of you guys that are coming in at night, maybe you decide to come in at night because you got a better price on the ticket. Uh, make sure that you know what hotels are available at, at the uh, at the airport, and also make sure that you know what kind of transportation is available at the airport. So it could be taxis, it could be a bus, it could be a grab, or a private car. All these dogs are really out of control today. So again, that's kind of important. So make yourself make sure that you familiarize yourself with the airport of your arrival. All right, so, you, so you're kind of ready here, guys. Uh, uh, on the day that you packed, a uh, couple things I want to talk about packing, and you want to pack wisely. When, when I buy a pack, a back, I usually buy a backpack. Some guys want to buy a, a you know, a, 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 how should I say it, a, a travel bag that's on rollers and stuff. I like to buy a backpack. Uh, I like to travel with just a carry-on travel bag. That's what I like. And there's a maximum size, which is 24 inch height, 14 inch wide, and 9 inch deep. And you can get a lot of stuff in these bags. You can also put in a laptop in the bag, too. Uh, now, there's going to have some weight restrictions. I think it's usually 11 to 14 kilos on a carry on bag. But what you can also do is uh, you can take the laptop out of the bag when you check in. Because you can, you can bring in one carry on and then one additional. Uh, carry on with the carry on bag. Uh, but I usually, uh, if I don't have a check in bag, a lot of these airlines, if you don't have a check in bag and you have a carry on bag only, even if it's a little bit more weight than what the uh, maximum carry on weight is, they'll let you slide because you don't have a check in bag. So, again, uh, for me, a carry on bag is perfect because you don't want to be uh, lugging, and you want to make sure that you get the right kind of luggage when you're traveling. Especially a place like the Philippines, you know, you're going to be jumping into a bus or a taxi, this, that. Uh, again, it's better to have a carry-on bag. I would recommend it highly. Uh, so, if you're going to buy a carry-on bag, make sure that the bag has a laptop compartment uh, and make sure that it has a lot of easy access compartments with a lot of zippers and stuff. Because what you want to do is, uh, you know, you, you certain things you want, might want to put in your bag that you want to have access to uh, fairly quickly. Uh, maybe your tenure, maybe sometimes you want to leave, put your passport in your bag. It's, you know, if your bag is with you all the time, uh, again, a passport I normally would recommend that you keep on you instead of in your bag. But if you've got your bag with you all the time, uh, certain things you want to have quick access to. Maybe a pen, maybe a little pad, uh, your glasses, stuff like that. So you want a, a lot of... Uh, compartments, uh, zip, zipped up compartments on your bag at all, uh, to be able to access your stuff at all times. Uh, let's see, and you also, when you pack your bag, you want to bring clothes that are climate appropriate for where you're going. So if you're coming to a country like the Philippines or Southeast Asia, uh, where these are tropical uh, type of climate, 
Uh, you know, maybe you want to bring one pair of long pants, you know, in case you've got to go into immigration or something like that. But overall, uh, on a hot climate type of country, uh, you just basically bring shorts, t-shirts, <laughs> flip-flops, maybe one pair of gym shoes. So don't bring stuff that you're not going to use. Uh, just don't do it, okay? Uh, and again, it's one of the worst things you can do is when you overpack a bag and you got too much weight on you, you're going to be throwing stuff out anyway when you're there, so why even bother? Bring stuff that you're going to use. You know, and it's really funny, it goes back to one of the times I, I, I was on a trip here, I can't remember which trip it was, I think it was back in 2016, came to visit my wife, and I was coming back from the trip. I came back in and I just had my carry-on bag, and I, I, I was at the Chicago airport, Grab my bag, you know, and for you guys that know the Chicago airport, right before uh, you go through customs, and then once you get out of customs, there's the uh, carousel there for the uh, check-in bags. So I grab my bag and I just one more custom guy you got to go through to get out of that immigration area. And the guy looked at me, he goes, well, where's your check-in bag? I go, I don't have one. He goes, what do you mean you don't have one? I go, well, I looked at him and said, was there a do I have to have it? Because what was your, you know, where's your check-in bag? I go, look, man, <laughs> just like that. Yeah, I'm tired. Uh, it was a long 16-hour flight, whatever it was. I looked at the guy. I go, hey, I'm in the Philippines. It's 90 degrees every day. I got, you know, two, three shorts. I got about five or six T-shirts. Uh, one pair of gym shoes. A pair of flip-flops. I mean, what do you want me to carry? It's climate appropriate. What do, you, what, do you, what do you want me to have in here? He just kind of looked at me. He was dumbfounded. He couldn't say anything. Pushed me around too, and that was that. So, again, uh, bring, uh, and you can always, if you need something, especially in the Philippines, you can always buy something. There, you can find your size. I mean, if you're, uh, it depends. If you're a big, big guy, you might not find your size. If you're the average height, 5'8, five, 5'9, five, the average weight, you'll be able to find clothes that'll fit you. So again, don't overpack. All right, so now you've packed your bag. And next thing I would recommend that you bring is you're going to make, you want to bring, in case you lose your passport, guys, you're going to have to go to the embassy and you're going to have to prove who you are. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to bring a copy of your birth certificate. If you were naturalized in the United States, you want to bring a copy of your certificate of naturalization. Make a copy of your driver's license. Make a copy of your flight itinerary so when you get to the airport, you can just pull out your itinerary or if it's on your phone, that's even great too. And uh, you want to make copies of uh, all the necessary passwords and phone numbers that you may need while you're in the Philippines uh, in case you have to access an account, stuff like that. I got copies of all passwords uh, to all accounts that I have, but I've got multiple accounts. I've probably got about 40 accounts or 35 accounts of just different types of accounts I have online. There's no way I can remember the password to all these accounts. So I have a list. Now bring that with me and make sure you, know, you obviously don't, uh, you know, it's secure, uh, these passwords. And again, if you're not, you know, you don't have to bring your whole list of all passwords. Just bring the passwords uh, and account numbers of the accounts that you think you will use in the Philippines. And that's usually three or four accounts. So again, uh, making copies of your birth certificate, certificate of naturalization, and driver's license will enable you to get another passport to prove who you are, to get another passport in case you lose your passport. Make a copy of your passport. You can need that as well. Uh, and again, uh, making a copy of your passports and phone numbers, that's uh, in case uh, you, know, you need to get into one of your accounts and stuff like that. Uh, I talked about the electronics already. So that's that. Uh, and what you want to do is when you, final thing I would recommend is when you get to the, you know, you on the day of your departure, get to, your, get to the airport three to five hours before your flight. Nowadays with TSA, you know, they're checking people out and stuff like that. The lines are a little bit longer. Uh, Homeland Security is checking people out a little bit better. Uh, so it might take a little longer uh, to, uh, to get to your, uh, to the gate. So again, three to five hours uh, for international flights. If it's a domestic flight, obviously it's less than that, but three to five hours I would recommend you get to the airport before your departure. But that's it. <coughs> I mean, if you just follow these simple tips, 
uh, you should be okay uh, traveling as a tourist on vacation to whether you know you're going to Southeast Asia, Europe, or whatever. You should be okay. Uh, I don't think I left anything out, but if anybody can think of anything else, please feel free to leave it in the comments section. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, again, if you have any comments, leave it in the comments section. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. And everybody have a good, have a good day, and we'll talk to you on the next video.